Hey everyone, so in this video I'm going to show you all of the regions of the brain and their significant parts using a combination of pictures, models, and videos. So the pink wrinkly portion everybody thinks of when they think of a brain is the cerebrum. And on the cerebrum all of the valleys are called sulci and all of the hills are called gyri. And separating the left and right halves of the cerebrum is the longitudinal fissure. So hanging off of the cerebrum, you have these two globes. Um, that's the cerebellum, which is separated from the cerebrum by the transverse fissure. And the two halves of the cerebellum are connected by a strip of tissue called the vermis. So from the outside of the brain, you can only see the cerebrum and the cerebellum, but when you open the brain up, you can see more regions. There's the diencephalon, the midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata. Now all together, the midbrain, pons, and medulla oblongata make up the brainstem. So from the inside, we can also see this band of white matter called the corpus callosum, which connects the left and right hemispheres of the cerebrum. Underneath that is the septum pellucidum, which is a thin wall between the lateral ventricles. Remember the word septum um, does mean a wall, like the septum in your nose is a wall between your nostrils. Underneath that is the fornix, which is a tract of white matter that's a part of the limbic system. And underneath that is the interventricular foramen. So this is a hole which is draining the lateral ventricles into the third ventricle. Um, remember, ventricles are open space. So the third ventricle is just the open space around the diencephalon. Then the whole bean shape is the thalamus, and in the center of the thalamus is the intermediate mass, which connects the left and right half of the thalamus across the third ventricle. And above the thalamus is the epithalamus. And at the very end of that, the pink bump is the pineal gland. So if above the thalamus is the epithalamus, the region below the thalamus is the hypothalamus. And hanging off the hypothalamus, there's a thin white stalk, the infundibulum which is connected to the pituitary gland, and that's how the hypothalamus is able to communicate with the pituitary gland. There's the mammillary body, and the mammillary body is sort of in front of the midbrain, and then on the back of the midbrain are the corpora quadrigemina. So you can't see them great in this picture, but there are two bumps on the back of the midbrain. And if we're just talking about the top pair of bumps, it's the superior colliculi, and the bottom pair of bumps are the inferior colliculi. Then running through the midbrain is the cerebral aqueduct, just like the interventricular foramen is draining the lateral ventricles into the third ventricle, the cerebral aqueduct is draining the third ventricle into the fourth ventricle. 
Then on the front of the medulla oblongata, that raised area is the pyramid. And the white matter contained within the cerebellum um, is the arbor vitae, meaning tree of life. And outside of the white matter, all of the gray matter on the outside is the cerebellar cortex. So if you look behind the mammillary body, where I'm highlighting in red, you see there's kind of that thick band of tissue. When you look at it straight on, um, number 42, that is the cerebral peduncle, which is connecting the pons to the higher parts of the brain. And over on the side, you see what number 43 is pointing at is a thick band of tissue connecting the pons to the cerebellum. And that is the middle cerebellar peduncle. So you can see it pretty good here. When you open up and you pull the cerebellum off, that's part of the middle cerebellar peduncle. And that is also representing the middle cerebellar peduncle. So the cerebrum has lobes that kind of correspond with the bones of the cranium frontal lobe, parietal lobes, temporal lobes, and the occipital lobe. But there's also a hidden fifth lobe that you can't see except on this dissectable model when you can actually pull the brain stem out. And that is the insula. Just think it's hidden, it's insulated inside the brain. So this is a model where you can pull off the top half of the cerebrum and it allows you to see the, the cerebrum has layers. So the outer layer, the pink layer, is the cerebral cortex, while the inner white layer is cerebral white matter. You can also see this region, which is the internal capsule. And the hippocampus, which is kind of sitting on the floor of the brain. And the caudate nucleus wrapping around this way. And also the fornix, which you can see when the brain um, is in halves, but it does extend internally into the brain. So this is also part of the fornix. So a couple times throughout this video, I mentioned white matter and gray matter. And what that means is gray matter is the part of the neuron um, that cell bodies. And white matter is made up of the part of the neuron that's the myelinated axon. Remember, myelin is made up of fat, so that's why um, it appears to be white. And there are different types of white matter tracts. Commissural fibers are connecting across hemispheres, um, so left to right. Like the corpus callosum is an example of a commissural fiber. Projection fibers are connecting top to bottom. So the cerebral peduncle would be an example. Also the internal capsule that we saw on the previous slide would be an example. And then there's association fibers which connect different parts of the same hemisphere. Um, I don't have any named examples that you can see on the models. They do exist, but it's a little bit beyond what I want to do in a basic brain anatomy intro. All right, everyone, as always, I hope that was helpful. Have a great day and have fun learning.